Wait, I gotta do my head turn. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to the Rise Up Podcast. This is episode four. Unfortunately, Tata will not be joining us. He apparently had more important things to do, which is disappointing, but I am always joined by my brother Grant. Ride or die. Of course. It's hard to imagine what else Tata could have going on because that dude has nothing nothing going on in life. <laughs> I wonder if he's going to listen yeah. to this and be like, why are they roasting me he is, up? He, but no. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited to do this podcast because I am fired up. Oh yeah. About a few things. What are you fired up about? This is our first time talking right, in a right. while because <laughs> the, the first thing I want to talk about, and I want to make it clear that this this frustration comes out of uh, out of love for magic. Not to sound weird, but it does kind of sound kind of weird. I got a no- I got a notification on a my personal Facebook, so not the Rise Magic Facebook, for a new show that Facebook would think I would like to watch called The Magic oh, really? Show. Yeah, and. It stars Rick Lax, uh, Justin Flom, Jabrizzi, and the other guy. I don't remember his name. Isn't or it? I, I didn't it's recognize David him. David Yu or something like that. He was on Ellen, I think. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so... Oh, man. People... Since this whole podcast is about like answering questions people send us, we got a ton, a ton of questions saying, Hey, have you seen The Magic Show? What do you think about it? Yeah. So, real quick for people who haven't seen it or don't know what it is. It's Jabrizzi, Rick Lax, uh, Justin Flom, and the other guy, David, you said? Yeah. They all combined to make like a joint Facebook account, like a TV show. And that TV show, they basically, they don't they don't collaborate at all. They just post their own videos on it. Hmm. And the videos that they've posted I've seen have get like 175 million views. That's not bad. And one of... <laughs> No, it's not bad at all. They're probably making tons and tons of money. And I would be the first. I think I think people who follow us know that whatever we do, we're trying to be encouraging and positive and never say negative things about anyone. Except for Tyler. So before we Yeah, except for Tyler and ourselves. So before we go in depth about the magic show, I wanna say I know people there are a lot of people who don't like Jabrizzi. I've never met him, so I can't make a judgment call on about him. And even if I had met him, I wouldn't tell you guys that you should feel about someone a certain way if they haven't met them themselves. Um, so Jabrizzi seems like a great guy. I've met Justin Flom. Justin Flom's a great guy. Rick Lax, fooled Penn and Teller. He's an amazing magician. And the other guy, like I said, I don't know. But man, all that aside, that whole page frustrates me so much. I mean, I can probably guess why, but <laughs> let's, let's just hear, let's hear what you have to say. Why does it frustrate you? All right, all right. So I don't want to step on any toes. Like I don't want to seem like I'm dissing people because I'm not. The main thing is Jabrizi, it's not really an opinion. He has been caught faking magic. And I'm sure many people have done that. Uh, Ollie Mealing even confessed. He said he's a great magician now. He said, I did that at one point. I faked something for a trailer for something I was doing and I regret it. So just because Jabrizi faked it once doesn't mean we all have to like, you know, destroy him for it or never yeah. forgive him but the main issue is is when i'm watching the magic show stuff the same fake magic is being performed and i just in real life when i have friends who know i do magic i get sent facebook messages of his videos yeah. on the magic show and all this stuff tag me oh can you do this trick for me no i can't it's impossible to do a trick like that and the main thing is is that when I say he's doing fake magic, it's your coaching reactions and I'm sure you guys have seen the type of trick where let's say the trick's a snap change. The angle sensitive part of the trick is behind you, right? It's that 180 degree yeah. view of yield behind you. So he does the snap change for the camera and has the faces behind him so you could, so the viewer can see the magic and the reaction at the same time, which is brilliant. Yeah, that whole idea is smart. Doing a trick and in the camera frame, getting the reactions and the magic at the same time makes for great thumbnails, great everything. Very true. But the problem is when you're doing tricks that I know, just because I'm a magician, I know that they're seeing how it's done while you're doing it. I don't care that you're showing someone how it's done. I care that you're posting it and telling everyone that oh, I'm showing these people magic. No, you're not. Those are actors. You're Very putting true. on a magic show for you're putting on a magic show for people of the internet. Who, who want to see 
magic for the camera and the reactions are all fake behind them. And that's just like, I get that it makes sense for money. I get that it makes sense for show and it all makes sense. And it, it obviously uh, works for marketing. They're crazy successful. You oh, can't yeah. knock that. They've had crazy amounts of success. Like Rick lacks 500 million views, all that stuff. It's insane how much success they have. And I can't knock them for that. I just can't see myself ever doing something like that. Cause I think it's, I, I just want to say, I think it's ethically wrong to tell the people that are watching that these are real people reacting when they're yeah. just straight up not. It's a big lie. It's funny because they are crazy successful. And um, Rick's, Rick Lacks, I actually had to end up blocking him on Facebook. Not because I didn't like him or anything, but just because people were sharing his stuff so much because he baited shares. I mean, he does that very mm -hmm. well. That just like, he was, for his, at some point in time, he was all I would see on my feed for Facebook. And I just, like, he's, right. he's a good looking guy, but enough's enough. <laughs> You know? Yeah, it's just it's just an oversaturation. That that's the thing about Rick Lax is that that dude is I don't think anyone could knock how talented a magician oh, yeah, he is. He definitely. went on Penn and Teller and, and fooled them. He's an incredibly talented magician. And like I said, it's not a personal attack at all. I just don't ever see myself like you guys have watched our YouTube videos, you see that we ask for likes and comments. Oh, yeah. You have but to. the whole the whole like the whole like um you know, pause this video and we'll make a deal. If I get it right, yeah. you like it. Lock it. I don't see. Lock yeah. in your lock thought in your with answer. the like button. You got to hit the like button. You got to share it with five friends. We're now, here to make thing. a deal here. If I get this right, which you know it's going to because that's the whole point of the video. Uh, yeah. If I get this right, you have to prompt to share. All right. Have you promised? You're sure. <laughs> You're promising now. All right. Now I want you to lock in your promise by hitting the like button. And now we're going to go. Now, here's the thing. On, on the way off one in a million shot, because Rick Lax is so much more you know, popular than yeah. or 10 million times more, right? If off chance he's listening to this, like... It's smart. Maybe we should... It's so smart. He's a genius. Like, that, that's very smart of you to do. I just... I just... Like, maybe if I want to be successful, I should do what he's doing. But I just don't see myself ever doing that. So don't worry, guys. I'm not going to... Yeah. I'm not going to do that unless you guys freaking, you know, never like our videos. That would frustrate me. Very true. So I would make you <laughs> or make a Patreon. And next, I don't know. Next time we're going to be in our videos like, all right, now I want you to lock in this move that you just learned. We, we hold up. We need it. We definitely need to do that in the video. I'm going to be like uh, the next trail. I'm like, now before I show you the final step, I need, you to, I need you to lock in the memory that you've committed to the first part of the tutorial, lock it in right now for you by hitting the like button and sharing with five I, friends. I need you to commit this move to memory and commit to working on this move and practicing this move by hitting the subscribe button and donating to our PayPal. <laughs> While you're at it, here's my PO box. Just send me anything you have. Just send me $400 straight cash in the mail. <laughs> now here's the other aspect of the magic show. It, it, it's very smart in that they're taking four popular magicians and combining, basically combining their viewership to make a mega platform for all of themselves to share. Brilliant. My whole thing is, I don't want to say I don't get the inclusion of Jabrizi. Like I'm not trying to knock that kid. I've actually talked with him on Instagram. He hit us up when we only had like 5,000 followers. Oh, yeah. I remember that. And he's, he's blown up in like the past year. Yeah, for a while we used which to Which is have. unfortunate because... So for a while, we used to be like right there with him on the same uh, follower base. Yeah, now he's got like over 100,000. Yeah, he's blown us out of the um, water now. Which is crazy because he basically took the concept of, and you, as magicians, if there's magicians listening to this, I'm not saying this is right and I don't think it's something I would ever do. But he basically said, he made a conscious decision that like the magic community is like 0.002% of the US population. Mm -hmm. So who do I want to make happy? The magic community or everyone else? Yeah. And he chose everyone else and he's been wildly successful doing it. So Jabrizi, I don't hate the kid, but I know that there are a lot of people in the magic community who genuinely like hate him. No, I don't. Yeah. I got no pro I mean, I don't I don't want to say I have no problems with him. Uh, I don't like what he's doing, but as a person, I, I like, you know, I respect what he's doing. Yeah. In terms of just making a successful life for himself. You know, I, I 
<laughs> you know what I'm yeah, saying? Like, I mean, essentially, I don't, I don't like what he's doing, but he's he's making money, yeah, and he's providing for himself and his family, so I can't knock he's that. Eating. Um, yeah, but like, exactly. but basically, what he's chosen is entertainment over magic, uh, because what he's mm-hmm. doing, he's taken, he's taken a look at like, what do people, what does the main audience like about magic videos? Is it a trick? Reaction. Yeah, a little bit. People like to see the cool trick, but mainly, people want because. I feel like 90% of people out there are, their emotions are based on those around them. So if they feel in a video, like the emotion that people are like excited and in awe, you're going to kind of glean that, uh, away from them and, um, yeah, and kind of and share that same experience that the people on the screen are. And so he's taking right. just that reaction, which is what people like, cause reaction videos blew up on YouTube, uh, a t- right around the same time. Mm-hmm. So he's like, People just like reactions, so I'm just going to take the reactions out of magic and just make entertainment based on that, using the guise of magic as the funnel for that. And so, uh, it's smart, but the main problem with that is how it leaves people who are actually trying to do magic, because um, for people who watch those videos and are subscribed to him and watch those stu- watch all those types of videos by Rick Lax, whoever, it sets an unrealistic expectation uh, for people who are actually yeah. doing it in person because some of the stuff like you can argue like well then you're just not being creative enough and coming up with good enough magic which is true attitudes everything well but yeah some well, of the honestly, stuff that they I do is gonna... just legitimately impossible to actually perform mm-hmm. because it's all set up it's a movie basically it's yeah. expecting like a magician to go and be able to do something that they saw in chronicles of narnia or uh star <laughs> wars or harry potter in real life but here's what's crazy is that one of the biggest things I get told when I perform magic for people is someone will pull me aside and be like, you know, that's my first time ever seeing magic in person. I always thought it was fake. Yeah, true. So they say, I always thought when I saw it on the internet and saw the reactions and saw David Blaine, I thought that was fake. Yeah, true. But now I see that it's real. And I'm like, dang, I don't I don't like that reputation. And that, that adds to the whole magic show thing because Justin Flom, great magician, Rick Lax, you might be annoyed by his Facebook stuff, but I'm sure in real life, if you fool Pentar, a great magician. Oh, yeah. Jabrizi, I don't want to knock the kid. He's been nothing but nice to he's us. He's a decent magician. But he's not bad. He, he's not. Like he's, other, well, I guess he he fooled Penn and Teller, but it was kind of... Like he, I don't want to go. Yeah. I don't want to go into it, but he, he fooled them on a technicality. Yeah. He didn't. He, um... He's a good magician. I, I think he's not... He's a good magician. He's a, a fantastic entertainer and performer. But fantastic. He's chosen, One of the best. He's chosen to focus more on the entertainment aspect, which I guess you can say the same thing about us in some ways because um, we focus a lot on the video editing and making it look as good as we can in post. But we need to make sure that it doesn't sway away from the actual content as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But just just one last thing about the magic show and then we can move Let's on. Go for it. What I What I don't get... And I don't know if it's Justin Flom and Rick Lax is sending an olive branch because they feel bad for the hate that Jabrizi's gotten. But they're respected magicians. And I know that when I watch a Justin Flom video that he's not faking it, that those are real. Yeah. But when I see him and Jabrizi working together and Jabrizi, he hasn't stopped doing this. He hasn't stopped doing those reaction things. It would be one thing if he stopped. But the videos he's still uploading are those fake, you know, reactions where they can see the... Uh, the bad angle, right? So I don't get why he would put his reputation at risk. I guess I guess he views it the same way where he would rather attract the large audience and yeah. have the small audience be happy with it. And you. I guess like seeing from Justin's fond perspective, seeing what Jibrizzi has done in the social space, which has been uh, remarkable with his growth and everything. Um, yeah. Like, because Justin, he's been, I assume, I don't know this for a fact, but he's been around the same size for a long time. Uh, Pretty much, yeah. Like, he hasn't really seen too much growth, too much loss. He's just been around. He's a big magician, but he hasn't seen. So he sees that growth that Jabrizi has and says, like, well, what can I take from that to experience that same growth as myself, a larger creator? And so I can see why he would, but it does take away some of his credibility, I believe. Man, it just, I don't. And here's the thing that I'll just say that I straight up don't like about Jabrizi. Mm-hmm. I don't like it. Now I'll tell us to his face. The ego and the, the I'm a God type stuff. Yeah. 
I don't like that in any any category, but I guess in like I listen to hip hop, you listen to rap and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. It's very popular to just be as cocky as possible. Oh, yeah, people dig that. And it seems like everyone like f- just like cultivates towards people who are extremely egotistical. And you know, it's I don't want to say it's frustrating because I it, I don't think I hope it'll never change me. And I'm not saying we're huge at all. We're very small, yeah. but. I make a point to reply to every comment, every DM, because we are literally nothing without the people who support us. Absolutely nothing, right? So in that same sense, we're absolutely nothing without them. How am I going to treat them like I'm the best? I'm I can't reply to you. I'm too busy. I'm too cool to reply to you, right? So, but it seems like doing that is what makes you seem more exclusive and more popular. The fact that you you care about your people and and want to talk to them you know, your, your base, that makes you look dumb just in popular culture because, oh, if you're big, if you're popular, you don't have time to do that. Yeah. I don't know. I know. It's, it's celebrity culture because people, <laughs> yeah. want, people want what they can't have. Mm-hmm. And so if, if like, getting a, a like, even just a like on their comment on YouTube from some famous person seems so unattainable yeah. that, like, you want it more. Right. And that's why it cracks me up because we still get comments on YouTube or, or people will still reply to the DMs mm-hmm. and be like, OMG, I cannot believe you replied. I'm like, man, I reply to literally everything. I don't think I... Like, Except for giveaway videos because <laughs> that just gets out of control. Yeah. Giveaway videos, there's 6,000 comments. Yeah. But I, here's the thing. In those giveaway when they have 5,000, I still probably reply to like 300. Yeah. Just like really, the ones that were really nice and really, they, they, they were a long comment. I still tried to find a way to reply to them. But I know exactly what you're saying where it's like, if we never replied to people, then it would be so much more big of a deal. Yeah. But I just, I don't ever want to do that. I mean, if, I really eventually don't. it might have to be that way because yeah, if, we if we're blessed growing. enough to get to that point where like we are getting like 6,000 comments on our video, then it's just something that can't happen. Yeah. But until... You're still, I think I would still reply to like... 50, oh yeah, of course. Like know? I know some probably, they'll like be like, I'm just going to pl- apply to every comment I can for the first like hour and a half two hours after the video goes live right right stuff like that encourage you will turn notifications hey turn notifications for us yeah because that helps a lot um yeah it really it really does because youtube sub box is super weird yeah because like oh my gosh dude we've i've posted a video before on uh youtube and have gone to my personal account sub box and looked for it and couldn't find it and had to just go to our like literally it's two seconds after i posted it and just wouldn't show up for me like this is my channel. Yeah. This is my content. And even some of the people who I like talk to regularly in the Instagram DMs are like, "Did you guys post a new video? It's Thursday." I'm like, "Yeah, every Thursday at two o'clock." Like, haven't seen it. Yeah. And I'm like, "Dang, that sucks." Especially people who are waiting for it. Yeah, I know. And so. And then uh, notifications a week uh, isn't too much. Shameless plug. Um, yeah, I was I was replying to I was talking to a uh, a friend of mine who's a lady. Um, and she said that she has notifications on and gets the notification emails about like five days afterwards. Really? Yeah. So she gets the emails like she'll get an email that says Rise Magic uploaded a new video today on like Friday about the Monday video. She showed me and I was like, that's messed that is, up. Because like I get notifications on my phone for I only have post notifications on for like two or three channels on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Um, just because like I do want to see their videos when they come out. I appreciate the stuff they do. Wait, are you are you willing to reveal who you have post notifications on? For? Not at the moment, um, <laughs> but they're all Minecraft YouTubers. <laughs> but like, I get random notifications from channels that I don't have it on, and like yes. the second oh. after. Yes, that's what I was gonna say. I have post notifications on for no one because this is not in a, in a cocky. I don't ever want, but I I don't have any notifications on on my personal on my phone. Because of Instagram, we get a lot of DMs, YouTube, we get a lot of comments. The only notifications I have on my entire phone are Twitter and, uh, and iMessage and phone calls, obviously. So you're saying if people want but to I, contact I you, they should go follow your personal <laughs> Twitter. <laughs> that is, honestly, that is true. Even though we reply to all comments on, and all messages, if you need if you need a reply from me, hit me up on Twitter. Exactly. Twitter name's on the screen right now. <laughs> <laughs> you better put them there. Yeah, but I yo... Oh my gosh. Let's switch topics, but this is a nice segue. I hate 
what YouTube and Instagram are doing with suggesting yeah. and, and making decisions for you on what you want to see. Is that a Craig way right there? You know, you know here's, here's the wild thing, Grant. The wild thing. Guess what I do if I want to see someone's content regularly? I subscribe to them. Yeah. Now on Instagram, guess there's this crazy thing. If I want to see someone's pictures and see someone's posts, I follow them. No. And they appear and aggregate in my feed. That doesn't seem right. But no, <laughs> Instagram has changed it all so that every three posts in my feed, I get a recommended for you post. That in this, And here's the thing though, it would be one thing if they were right. Yeah, if it actually and, worked. No, well. no, hold up. If it worked well, even if it worked well, I'll find it on my own. And I get that's how you get people to grow, but I'm getting, the recommended for you I'm getting are like g Easy. Yeah. And Lil Wayne. Like people like, don't, it's one thing that if you're recommending creator creators who who are like you know making awesome content on Instagram and don't have that many followers and they think it would be in line with what I'm doing, but they're they're promoting accounts that have 10 million subscribers yeah. and it's not. Here's the thing: it's not a promoted post. Those are different. Yeah, very like true. A promoted ad. This is a recommended for you that just shows up. And honestly, you know how like social media's fall, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, I guess the only one you could think of as social media that fall would be Vine and um, MySpace. Yeah, I mean, because Facebook owns Instagram. Yeah, I mean, there's right millions of so there's probably thousands of social medias out there, and like, I can't think of it, but like, they're not ever really gonna fall. There's always gonna be a fan base. Like, people still use MySpace. Uh, yeah, people yeah, they're still true. cult following around Vine so much that they even wanted Vine too. Uh, that's they true. just have to keep it up and like maintain the monetization. But that's a different conversation. But it's but yeah. Here's the thing: like if Instagram, it bought. Oh, and then see the number one complaint I have about Instagram, the number one, and any social media is show me my content chronologically. Yes. I don't want you to decide yes. what order it comes in. Like, do not. It makes me so mad. And here's. <laughs> Everyone's like, why are you getting so passionate about social media? Because it's how Rise, it's what we do. Yeah. Rise Magic is a business. And we're so thankful for all of you guys who support us. But it is a business. We do make money doing it. I'm sure you guys mm-hmm. know that. So when you, we have a business page on Instagram, it's all about exposure. And you want to you wanna show your stuff to as yeah. many people as possible. And since we have a business page, we can see impressions, mm-hmm. right? Now, back in January, February, March, when we had much less followers, like 10,000 less, we were getting more impressions and more likes per post on all of our content. So back in, you guys could go look if you care, right? January, February, March, we had like 24,000 followers, right? Yeah. And we would average like 1,500 to 2,000 likes on every post. And like, I think the impressions were 20,000. Yeah, that's about. Impressions just means how many people saw it. Mm -hmm. Now, if we go to now, I've, Honestly, Grant knows that I always made a point where I was like, if it's going on Instagram, it has to be so like, I would have such a high standard for what we post on Instagram because I always want it to get over a thousand likes. I would be like spending, I would be like spending a bunch of time in Photoshop, like making these sick pictures. And then we did the same (laughs) thing. Like what was the most, it like got like 700 likes or something like that. Something stupid. Yeah. And then when we started getting, and here's the thing, it's not like we can't. I care about impressions more than I care about yeah, likes. Exactly. Where what bothers me is that if we put work into what we put on Instagram now, it's getting seen by seriously about half the amount of people. Mm-hmm. So my thing is, it's, it's being seen. Oh, you were still talking about that. So my thing is, it's being seen by half the amount of people. When we have, we had 23,000 followers back then, we have close to 33 right now. So it's getting seen by half the amount of people. And I know why. It's because with the algorithm, it will, it shows you what you think you want to see. So on my personal account, it shows me Rise Magic stuff because I'm on there all the time. But if we don't post that often on Rise Magic, like if we go two weeks without a picture, yeah. people aren't going to visit our page that much, which means it's no longer be recommended for them. So it's not even going to show up in their feed. No matter mm-hmm. how far they scroll, they will never see a Rise Magic post yeah. unless they go and search Rise Magic. That means we have so many ghost followers and they didn't even want to be ghost followers. Instagram made them ghost followers. And when you're like, man, oh, and I know Instagram's a free service, but I don't get how that's benefiting them 
to put recommended posts in there and take it out of chronological when they have the sponsored posts. Yeah, I mean, that's why they're the sponsored posts. Their, uh, the big accounts. Because yeah. Ones that make them money. But see, but at the same time, I wouldn't have a problem with Instagram if it was chronological and they threw in a sponsored post and ad. Yeah. They would make tons of money doing that. I don't get why the change shifted. I don't get how switching from chronological to non-chronological makes them any more money. It, if it's the same amount of ads. Yeah. I mean, I guess they're trying, what they might be trying to do is just uh, help grow the accounts that post like every single day, which is why meme pages are huge now because they yeah. don't put any effort in. <laughs> they just find a meme yeah. on somewhere or Reddit or whatever and just post it. Uh, speaking of memes, yeah. Discord is open my laptop right now to, for this and um, something just popped up. It said, it's just a random uh, channel. It says Tide Pod Chan resides here. Is there something, is there something you're not telling me about? Tide Pod Chan resides here? It's just a random server thing on Discord that, like, that's what someone named it. Oh, yeah, we're using Discord to talk right now. Uh, we, we were talking about doing that last podcast, yeah. and everyone recommended it. So, so let us know how this great audio sounds. quality. I got Grant and my uh, super weird Sony headphones that are, how old are these? Like Probably more than they're 10. They're very old. They're like, they're like almost 10 years old, man. I'm just using the OG Sony earbuds. Shout out. Nice. Alrighty, so. Yo, you know what was really funny? What I wanted to mention really what quick is uh <laughs> since this podcast we're, fil- we're we're talking this is we're being recorded on Thursday. Yeah. So we just posted the new episode of Rise Again and uh, on Monday we posted our top five two handed cuts. Now context of that, we filmed that video at three AM. Oh yeah. <laughs> um and we had to be really quiet because people in the house were sleeping. Mm-hmm. And so many people comment like, is this an ASMR video? Why are you guys talking so quiet? And a lot of people were like, we like it when you talk like this. This is so much more relaxing. And this ties back with the magic show stuff. Because along with that boasting Mm -hmm. and talking about how you're the greatest all the time will get you big. Talking loud is so popular. Jake Paul, Logan Paul. Like, any popular YouTube. Yeah. And I get it. Like I said, I get why that's successful. But at the same time, sometimes you just want to sit back. And I'm glad that people liked it because yeah. it seems like instead of saying like, hey, guys, today at Rise Magic, we're going to learn a magic trick. I want to say, What's up, fam? Welcome to the squad. No squad, fam. Oh, got notifications gosh. on. Like you would get more subscribers. I'm going to have fun and with I've, that in audition. <laughs> that was some peaks. <laughs> oh, I peaked it a lot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's what it feels like, Grant. That's what it feels like when YouTubers yell at them. Their editors probably hate them. <laughs> but yeah. Anyway, I, are we done with this topic for a second? Because there's something I want to tell you about. What? So, speaking of things that are happening, in about an hour and a half, I will be doing magic at a coffee house here at my work. So. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, How many people? Probably about 40, 45 tops. Are you going to have anyone film it for you? Yeah, I'm going to. I'm going to try to. Uh, maybe I'll okay definitely do that make an episode of rise again then. oh i'm planning on it and so Perfect. i have a small little routine that i'm planning on it's nothing small i wasn't planning on doing this but people asked people kept on asking me like we haven't seen you do <laughs> magic yet we've watched your youtube stuff so i have to be careful about what shout I, out oh yeah to your work squad word um yeah, you can't do anything we taught then yeah i know uh so i'm planning on doing a just like a normal like force a card predict it but i'm gonna have a little bit of a uh twist to it so like the person's gonna pick a card and they're gonna like try to get the audience to guess it but it's gonna be like this nice little meme where i'm behind them and i hold up a piece of paper that has a card already written on it and so everyone's gonna guess mm-hmm. it then the person who's in chair is have no idea how they all guessed it and it'll be funny <laughs> the second awesome. one i'm gonna do is just like i'm gonna try to do the world's greatest card trick i know there's an actual name for that but that's what i learned it as and so no that's his name really that's his okay name. People call it the Chicago opener sometimes. Yeah, Chicago, but that was the one I was thinking of. But I'm gonna try to do that, but make it like so it works and like and be like walking around the room with it. Then I'm right, gonna close with angle right. zero. Nice. Do you know where you're gonna put it yet? No, I'm getting. That's why I need to. I'm gonna have to be there about a half an hour or so really just to so I can make sure to scout it scout out. Scout out where I can make that go. Yo, man. All right, guys. Let us know in the comments what you think about Grant's little routine there. Yeah. You know, something, if someone's still listening 30 minutes into our podcast, 
the one thing I want to say really quick is, first off, I appreciate you so True. much. You have no idea. Big facts. Like, and that's why, and here's the thing, I'm guilty of so much. It's funny that me and Grant do YouTube now because I, I don't really watch TV anymore besides live sports. All I watch is YouTube, right? True. For, for years. And so I've had a YouTube account and been subscribed to hundreds of people and basically use it as my TV source for almost a decade. Guess how many comments I have left with my YouTube account in 10 years of YouTube? Just take a guess. I'm going to guess seven. Zero. I've never made a comment with I think my I've left personal three. account. And it's, you know why? It's, and here's the thing though. There are so many creators that I love to watch and love to listen to. So yeah. many. I could list those that are like, I am a huge fan of them. Mm -hmm. I love their stuff. I will always watch their stuff. You know how many times I've commented and told them, hey, I really love your stuff. Zero. And here's the other thing. I don't even like people's videos because I kind of use my liked videos as a playlist. Yeah. I've stopped that. Of like my I favorite do, videos. Ever since we started, I have liked videos a lot more. And I use yeah, kind of the I watch. I think I'm going to have to go through my liked videos playlist and convert them all to like my favorites or make a playlist yeah. so I can start liking my, my favorite people's I've videos. I've been using watch so later anyway. a lot. And then I'll like take things oh. in there and put it into a favorites after like I've kind of sorted it out. Right. Because the watch later, the watch later feature is amazing. I love it. Because you can really, I've never used it. Oh, I use it all the time. Because you can save a video to watch later, and now they add the feature where you can sort like, uh, like you can move things around the playlist so that you can like sort what order you want to watch things in. And so That's I'll awesome. do that, and then just throw it on like I have an Xbox with the YouTube app on it. Just throw all those videos on in this playlist on the TV. Just have it play them like a clean up, edit something, do whatever. And it's just absolutely phenomenal. Love it. So anyway, guys, what I'm saying is don't be like me. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm, I don't want to I don't want to say I'm begging you, but if you're listening to this right now, if you're listening to my words, please just drop a comment. And what should we have them say? Just say like, appreciate, appreciation squad. No. Say <laughs> Chandler sucks because he doesn't comment on anyone's videos. Yeah. Say Chandler's or so I just just tell me you heard this. Just yeah. please. Or say Chandler is not a part of the appreciation squad. Appreciate. We should start the appreciation. Like, hey man, I should. You know, what? I'm gonna start a uh, start commenting yeah. that my favorite creators channel. Say, hey dude, appreciation squad. Yeah. I just really appreciate. Dude, let's make that a right thing. Um, the appreciation so squad. I've been because I recently got an Xbox about like. Four or five months ago now, something like that. I don't know, Ooh. but I, I grant's a gamer. Man, I don't get to play all too much. Want... If anyone wants to add me on Xbox Live, let me know in the comments. You might get an ad. Um, but so on Xbox, people can just like see who you are and this anyone in the world, and uh, click on your username and message you. And so like right. it's happened so many, times, especially when I was new. Like I played NBA 2K, Battlefront 2. Those are the main ones. And like people would just straight up like send me like just hate mail. Someone said to me like, you're trash. Someone like, I guess I got, I didn't do well. in I mean, some NBA 2K, some guy messaged me. He's like, yo, you sold us. Get cancer. And I was like, whoa, <laughs> I didn't do that bad. <laughs> and so like what I started doing, anyone who was at the bottom of the leaderboard, I'd learned how to do it. And I just, uh, I would go down and message him and say, hey, you're loved and cherished. Did that, did that a couple times a day. We, you just had to let them know that, like, hey, like man. Like, you're loved and cherished. Everything's you're appreciated. Appreciation Spread squad. We're starting it right appreciation now. Appreciation squad. So if you're listening to this, I mean, we need you to go comment appreciation squad. Not We're going to start us. the Rise Magic channel. I mean, you can on us if you appreciate well, us. No, no. It's, start, it's starting on us. Yeah. Just everyone. You appreciate them. Only if you actually do appreciate us. I hope you do. Yeah, yeah. You, I don't, if, you, if you hate us, don't, 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 don't be fake. You yeah, know? of course. But let us know let why you know. so we can. I'll take the hateful comments. We have a dislike squad in our oh, videos. Oh, it's great. Um, Doesn't it make you feel special? It does. It's like someone subscribed to us and has post notifications on. Just yes, because they always come. Just to dislike our video within the first like minute and a half. It makes <laughs> I have the YouTube Creators app, right? Yeah. So I can tell, like, any I know Green has it too. I'm just talking to the people yeah. listening, but I can tell like who has notifications on by like the views that haven't rated people who comment right away. Oh yeah. Right. And there's always like in the first 20 likes, there's always like two dislikes. And I'm like, I, I, re I respect that. Those people are so dedicated to not liking us. Yeah. They're willing to make us money. The thing is, because they're so <laughs> quick, 
they have to be on mobile. And you can't have yeah. Adblock on mobile. So we're getting that tasty mm -hmm. 15 cents. Mm -hmm. Give or take, I don't know. Probably less. YouTube money. Getting that YouTube money. Buy myself a nice, a nice uh, Sharpie. Get with that YouTube money. I was thinking you were going to say some uh, some penny candy. Or no, we get some floss picks. Oh, yeah. Floss picks. Get. The YouTube money is the floss pick fund. <laughs> I just realized I've been shuffling cards like casually and they're not in frame. I haven't heard it. And I'd like to I like to apologize. Oh, you haven't heard no, it? I haven't. I'm going to do the most amazing magic trick for my camera right now. Okay, let me see it. Oh, How are you doing? Oh, that's amazing. How are you Oh, you're a little delayed. Okay. I'll coach you, right? Uh, we're gonna jabrizzy it. Okay. okay. So, in five, on my on my count on five, you're gonna react like crazy. Okay. Like you've just seen the most crazy thing. In the All world. right. I'm staring okay. into the five. camera. Hopefully, right now. <laughs> staring into the camera. Hopefully. Five, four, three, two, one. Oh my gosh! <laughs> oh, I'm not an actor. Uh, oh my gosh! All right. Anyway, we'll wrap this little. I don't know if this was a segment up, but it, it, we're just we're just chat. Since since this since this podcast is completely supported by you guys, you give us the topics, you message me on Instagram, you message us on Instagram, and let's know what we talk about. Something that we actually got a ton of messages about was Eden's new album. Oh yeah. Because Eden, so, oh, let me explain the whole love affair with Eden. Mm -hmm. So there definitely Eden, is one. His, there is, yeah. I'm attracted to that man. <laughs> he is incredible. Very much so. So talented. But the main reason I got into him is because his music is first off so good, but the whole Wake Up End Credits album mm -hmm. is copyright free. Oh. And it's very rare that you can find amazing, beautiful music that's copyright very free. True. And as YouTubers, copyright free is very important because you can still monetize the video, yep. right? So... Our, our most popular video, Car Street Battles, to end credits by Eden, which is an amazing song. And part of the reason why that video got so popular is because it has an amazing soundtrack, mm -hmm. right? And we can still make money off of it. And then we just started listening to him all the time. I, we were listening to him just, for like a while before we even started YouTube. Yeah, I would probably say I, I, I learned about him a year before we started yeah. YouTube. But I wasn't I wasn't like a super fan like I am true. now. Very Not true. to, But like, I'm, a, I'm enough of a fan of Eden where... I don't think I could have not liked this new album. Yeah, true. <laughs> I know. Like with this new album, coming, like I knew I was gonna like it. Um, and what's your uh, favorite song on the album? Uh, my favorite song right now is. I, I feel like this is a cop out because it was already out before the album. But gold. Gold's a good gold song. Gold is fantastic. Mine. Other than that, mine is forever. What was I it? I said. Other than that, take care. Take care is good. Yeah, take care is one. I uh. Forever and over. I oh. mean, forever. It's two dashes and over. Guys, if you like music, if you like listening to music, and if you don't know who Eden is, go listen to his new album, Vertigo. Mm -hmm. But more specifically, listen to Forever Dash Dash Over, okay? Yeah. And about three minutes and 25 seconds into that song, if you're wearing headphones, it's one of the coolest like beat drops musical moments I've heard. Yeah. And I don't know if it's because I like Eden so much, but it sounds so cool. And I, I actually used it in this episode of uh, Rise Again that we posted the, um, last Thursday. The beat drop in gold. I absolutely mm -hmm. love. And uh, love, love, it's like love parentheses brave. It was. The way that song yeah. starts, so good. I don't know, guys. I would, if you don't know Eden, but if you're listening to this and you watch our channel, you've heard Eden, you might not know yeah. it's Eden. Go listen to his new album, Vertigo. Channel goals. You know what? What I want to get out of YouTube mm -hmm. is to eventually meet the dude. Well, that's the that's what I was just about to say. Someone commented recently on the car street battle and said Eden needs to see this. I want to make sure Eden sees this. Yeah. And it's pop it's popular enough. It has two, it has a quarter of a million views mm -hmm. where maybe one maybe. day we can get at him. The only the only thing I would be scared of is obviously it's a copyright free album of him being like, Hey, like you made money off of that? You know what I mean? Like getting mad at us instead of being like, I mean, oh, that's I don't so think cool. he would. If he does, I'd be like, We're sorry yeah. we can unmonetize them. I wouldn't care about that at this point in time. Um, but just, like, that was the whole point of making his album copyright-free because he wasn't, like, he had a little bit of a following back then, but because that album was right. copyright-free and it got used in everything. Like, I've seen YouTubers right. with 2 million subscribers using his uh, music in their videos. Really? I have. I can link it to the video. It's a gaming channel. I didn't know he was that popular. It's a gaming channel, so I feel kind of, I'm 
embarrassed that I even know about it. Um, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Hey, we get, we probably got some gamers following oh, yeah. us. But like, I don't know. It's not something I want to admit to myself, even though I do watch a few <laughs> YouTube gamers. But the good ones, though. Um, mm. The ones who actually like care about their editing, not just the Let's Players. Uh, yeah. Who use? Hey, man, I got to respect their ground. Oh, yeah. The best business in the world is being a Twitch gamer. Oh, my gosh. You literally just play video games. You don't even have to commentate it. Like I'm sh- you really don't even have to commentate you what you're saying. You have to be saying. slightly entertaining, you just, but that's just it. I don't know, man. Some of the ones I've seen, like I've seen highlight videos on YouTube mm-hmm. of people's Twitches, and they're just playing. Yeah. You, you have to offer some sort of... You either have to be unreasonably good... Yeah, yeah. You have to be unreasonably good, an extremely funny individual, or a girl. <laughs> or what? Or a girl. Or or a girl, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man, that's what it's like with Karshi and Magic, too. I don't even want to get... I'm not going to touch that subject. Yeah. We're not going to talk I'm about not, that. I, but. And that's a joke halfway, because you do still have to, like, uh, be, like... You still have to be funny or entertaining or good at the game as a girl. Well, no, it's basically this. Like, if you're in a but, industry that's dominated by males, yeah, of course. And you're a female, and you're and you're just semi good at it. Of course, you're gonna be popular, and I can't mm-hmm. hate you for that. Like guys, but it's just first breaking. Like the few guys who like do makeup channels now on YouTube, everyone's like, it's a guy doing this. Which we can personal opinions about that can be left aside. But like, just because they're the opposite gender in a thing that's typically dominated by another gender, you're going to have an advantage. Right. All right, man. I feel like this podcast has been good so far. Yeah. We've had some great conversations, some great thoughts, but we need to loosen up, yeah. man. We need some stale memes. It's time for some memes. Uh, I know what your roll, meme is, so roll, I'm going to let you go last. Roll the clip. I'm, I know what your meme is, so I'm going to let you go last. But my meme okay. is... I haven't seen it. You haven't seen it, no. But my meme is an edit of the pain scale at the doctor's office that I found funny. And so it says, zero, no pain, feeling perfectly normal. One, very mild, very light, barely noticeable pain. Two, discomforting, minor pain, like answering you too, thanks to the barista. Uh, three, tolerable, <laughs> very noticeable, <laughs> very noticeable pain, like existence. <laughs> four, <laughs> Jeez. four, distressing, strong, deep pain, like a friend flirting with their SO while you're the third wheel. <laughs> Five, oh, very distressing. Man. It just says, ouch. <laughs> Six, intense, strong, deep, piercing pain. Like getting flossed at the dentist, but not being able to show your pain because you lied about flossing regularly. Now, that's something that neither of us can relate to, but I thought it was funny just because hashtag floss cast. I got my floss pick right here. Oh, yeah, I have mine in my ear right now. I was flossing earlier. Uh, seven, very intense, comparable to spending way too much time making a meme only to get seven upvotes. I feel that. I feel that. <laughs> Eight, utterly horrible. Uh oh, I'm running out of ideas. I just <laughs> nine, excruciatingly unbearable. Pain so intense you cannot t- tolerate it. It is comparable to forgetting you had a 15% off coupon until after you already paid. Ten, uh, unimaginable, unspeakable. Pain so intense it can only be caused by cutting your f- fingernails too short. <laughs> oh, that's true. Very true. Yo. I'm sure any magician or card is listening. That that's taken to a different level when you do this stuff. Oh yeah. <laughs> I remember one time I uh I cut my thumb too short and I literally like struggled doing a, uh, a yeah. set force. Oh my gosh. <laughs> or a riffle. Or nail care. Like we should do a tutorial on nail care. Thumbs up for that. Dude. Really. Yeah, yeah. Do you guys want us to because we did the tutorial on washing yeah. hands? I thought that was hilarious. Some people that video got a lot of views, yeah. sort of. Hey, twelve thousand. Just that was video is just in time for flu season, um, because <laughs> everyone around here is getting sick. But I'm knock on wood. Yo, we should post that segment on our Instagram yeah, and, and um, advertise it as like, hey, it's flu season. Make sure to wash your hands. Hey, right. There we go. Let's do it. Um, all right, all right. So my oh meme. Gosh. Grant told me I shouldn't do this I don't one. Like this. <laughs> Be, but I researched. This man is not dead. If the, and the caption, the fact, the fact I, I don't, that you have to clarify that before your meme <laughs> just proves that it's not a good one. Oh, I, yeah, it's not a meme, but Twitter, Twitter, follow us on Twitter. Um, uh, it should be popping on the screen right now, unless Grant was lazy. I, it's just lazy. The, you see the wildest, the wildest videos on Twitter, and this one was what happens when you go into too far into Snap Maps. Oh, the things you find on Snap Maps. Yeah. And I don't, I have a Snapchat, but I don't use Snap Maps because I don't want people knowing my location. Real gangsters mm-hmm. move in silence. True. You know what I'm saying? True. I can't have people knowing my next move or where I am. But 
I guess if you have it on, you get to see where, what's happening yeah, already what's in the United States on Snapchat. People can view your story. So, so, so someone clicked on this dude's Snapchat, and he's holding up his phone out selfie style. You'll be seeing it on the screen right now. I don't, um, want to put, I don't want to edit this in. But if you, oh, you don't want to edit it I don't in? Want to, it will be in, but I don't want to. You, you can cut it off, but like I did my research. He's not dead. He's perfectly fine. It was his hand that got hit. I think he broke his no, hand. No, if you see... What? If you, never mind. There's like a what? Tell me. There's like a frame of it that's been going around where his face literally looks like a Snapchat filter. <laughs> from it, you're like, he <laughs> you said his head got hit. I think so. It looks like it. All right, I should just for the people listening, right? So let me just finish it because I've already seen it. So he's pulling on his phone selfie style, and there's a train coming, and it's honking. He looks him. far enough away from the train, and then the more the train comes closer, you're like, this train's about to hit this man. This trains, and then he's holding his phone out, and obviously the phone like is recording it, and you just see boom, <laughs> and it's like everything's like shaking, like he got hit by the train. And the first time I watched it, I was like, I just watched someone die, and that's an awful feeling, right? I didn't want to see that. And then I scrolled down on Twitter. Now he's fine, but apparently Grant's notifying me now that he isn't fine. No, like there's a someone. There's a. It could very much be the way the <laughs> camera, the phone camera was moving, that caused some distortion based on like. Who knows what, like, I forget what it is, the, I forget what it's called, but like when the frame, like, cause the sensor goes up and down for taking the image, but just as his oh, freeze man. frame where like his face looks like a crescent, <laughs> it is like prayers <laughs> up for my man. Like the, I hate that I'm laughing, but it's like my way of coping with this right now. I feel like Logan Paul, but, um, Oh, let's not touch that subject. Okay. You know what? You know what I will say? Did you watch his video? No, I I don't like I don't want to contribute to that to people, so I don't watch their content. Well, I'll just I'll I'll tell you what happened because this is a hot button topic. Where, so he hasn't posted his he did daily vlogs for what like three yeah. years or two years. I know years. that he came back, but and he I never followed him, but like I knew about him because he's so popular. But he posted a video basically that was like suicide. Be here tomorrow, and it I gotta say, like I don't know the whole situation well enough to know like. Like, people say, are you going to forgive him? Like, I never, like, I don't know him personally. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, like, it's not up to me whether he's forgiven or not. Right? It's not to anyone on earth. But I do I do think you should be able to, unless you, like, you know, there's obviously some exceptions to every rule about things you'd be forgiven for. But I think, like, eventually you should be able to move past that. He's, you know. Anyway, very, I was very shocked by the video. It How's was that? very well done. It was basically a suicide PSA where he talked to a guy who jumped off the Golden Gate Bridge and survived. Mm -hmm. um, and, like, he had a haircut, he had a whole new look, and was very, very serious and somber the entire time. And it was really good. I don't know. I say at least 75% of that goes to the editor, whoever that was. Shout out to you for saving No, his yeah. <laughs> but anyway. No, I'm sure. Yeah. I feel like, I just, the one thing that I do want to know about that video before I, like, because I don't want to laugh at it. Is it monetized? Uh, no, I'm th not talking about Logan Paul. I'm talking about the train one. Um, oh. Is if he was doing it for the meme or if he genuinely wanted to get hit by the train. <laughs> like, <laughs> I know you're laughing, but I'm serious. I don't know, dude. I'm no, serious. I know. Cause like, but I don't, think he, I don't think he was trying to get hit at all. I think he was... You think he's just... I think he just thought it would be a cool angle and was too close. Yeah, because the train's honking him the whole time. I don't know. I mean, trains honk all the time when they're going through uh, popular Also, areas. when they see some moron with a cell phone standing <laughs> on the tracks. <laughs> it's also a good time to oh, honk man. as well. Yeah, that's true. They do have a conductor looking out for crap like that. All right, you know what? Maybe he wouldn't have been doing that if he had listened to the Rise Up segment. Yeah. All right. You know, where we close out. Do you like that, like that segue? Yeah, I do like we that segue. close out the podcast. The Craigway right there. I like it. I don't know, man. I, uh... I don't really have anything prepared for this, but I did I want to say one thing, man. Okay, oh, you, you can say yours first since yours is kind of off the cuff. Well, no, no, you got it. All right, mine is by uh, C.S. Lewis, uh, and this is just one thing I that's nice, to, like for people who create stuff like us or magicians who like to create, like, and uh, hit go pause, on, pausing. Well, not hit pause. Like the podcast is still gonna play. Grant, I'm gonna go grab my C.S. Lewis book that's sitting on my nightstand. You're gonna grab a what? And I'm back. What was I missed what you said. What was happening there? I said, we, it was funny that you had a C.S. Lewis quote because I didn't know Grant was going to do that. I have the best of C.S. Lewis, 
the the best of C.S. Lewis on my nightstand. Oh, nice, not bad. So, I don't know. I don't know what you're gonna say, but C.S. Lewis is one of the best authors of all yeah. time. Incredible. But this quote is for obviously people. the author of Chronicles of Narnia. Yeah. Anyway, sure. what were you saying? Right, so I said, this quote is: "I don't believe that good work is ever done in a hurry." Mm. And so, for like, it's interesting for people who like to create and like. I make videos and photos and a whole bunch of other stuff for work in my free time. Mm -hmm. You edit for Rise like more than I do most of the time. And you're constantly creating and making things even outside of Rise. And so with the type, with the amount of stuff that does need to get done for both of us, uh, and especially with this time crunch that we've been putting us on with three days a week, uh, it's interesting to try to find that balance between uh, good work and like just getting something out there and so right exactly mm -hmm. i don't know this with the stuff that's been going that, on i've just had to really focus on like my personal time and how i'm spending it and really taking uh into like taking into mind like what i'm gonna be doing through the week planning everything out and really making sure i have time to do that work without hurrying it right and so exactly right now at this point in life i think well, there's no. a maximum number of videos that we can without going full time at rise just because Oh no, of time course. commitment and and, quality. and just quality. Exactly. Like honestly, I could make I could make a YouTube video. Oh, one hundred percent. Yeah. It just it would be it would be it would be desaturated and, mm -hmm. and bad, you know. Yeah, we need it like. But that rem what you're saying reminds me of a quote that my basketball coach or as I this out his original quote, but it's a quote says "Be quick, but don't hurry." Exactly. Exactly. Which it seems like an oxymoron at first, but be quick, but don't hurry. Yeah. But it just means like be efficient, be smart with your time, but don't rush it. Yeah. Don't rush anything. Like stuff like like. You, keyboard you want to hear a really uh, a really corny quote about art 100%. or anything? Okay. Because it is the Rise Up segment. It's the corny quotes segment. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if you're a serious person, you'll be able to take these serious quotes. But it's like, you know, something is, an art piece is never finished. When nothing else can be added, it's finished. When nothing else can be taken away. Mm -hmm. You've heard that before? Yeah, yeah. That's like especially true about editing. Like I, the hardest thing I've had to do as an editor, the tutorials are so easy for me to edit. Next. Yeah, you just, you just, you put it in the rope, right? Yeah. Um, it's very linear. You know what's going to be in there. You have the content. Uh, the most great exactly. freedom you really have is with but the, the at the beginning. But the, the vlogs, the Rise Again series, those are so hard. Because I have to cut so much things, so many things that I think are funny. Mm -hmm. But it, the video can't be too long or no one's going to watch very it. true. So those are cut down so much. And most of the time when I edit those Rise Again videos is, you know, what do I take out that I, you know, I don't want to take yeah. out? Like Sharon took out, and I think it was our second vlog, just a six segment of um, me just killing it on the bench press. I was bench pressing like <laughs> 300, 400 pounds, just absolutely mutilating it. Just imagining that bar was a bear with two bear cubs hanging off of it and just throwing, just throwing around that weight, you know. Unfortunately, Sharon cut mm -hmm. it out so you guys can't see it, but it happened. I promise yeah, you. yeah. <laughs> No, no, he's right. <laughs> three, what was it, 350, 360? I just didn't want the viewers to feel bad. That was the warm-up. I eventually got up to 475. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm, in, I'm trying to get in the thousand true. club. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, man. That was a really solid quote. I don't really have one, man, but... What was it? YouTube's been getting me... What was, it, what was oh. the last uh, quote we had last week where you talked about laziness and being unmotivated? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, laziness. Anyway. Anyway, that's not related. I just thought it just came to my mind. Um, yeah, no, I, solid. Is there anything um, else you want to talk about? No, I was just going to say like YouTube can be discouraging sometimes with the views, especially. Oh yeah. Um, and I was listening, I listen to a ton of YouTube. I mean, I watch a ton of YouTube and I listen to a ton of podcasts mm -hmm. and one of my favorite podcasts, Jalen and Jacoby on ESPN, my man, Jalen Rose was saying like, they were talking, they talked about talking about this in the context of dating and like wanting a girl, like, oh, should I go after this girl? And he was like, uh, yeah, a hundred percent. That shouldn't even be a question. Yeah. So you want something, you you go get it. Yeah, it's not going to happen um, otherwise. So if like if YouTube's fluctuating a lot, right, and we're not getting that many views, I get I get frustrated because it seems like sometimes yeah, we got more views. We had four thousand subscribers back in May, mm -hmm. and we would get like twenty thousand views a video. Like if you go look on our on our history, yeah. and now we have close to thirty thousand subs, and can we struggle to get over five thousand sometimes, and struggle to get over ten thousand on really what's the same content, and I'm just like why. Right, but if I want to be successful, you know what you do? 
you put your head down, you stop caring about views, and you press on. Yeah, just focus on making the best content we can, and just trust that it's going to get out there. Because overall, at the end of the day, um, I firmly do believe that quality content will be found and will be. Uh, yeah, if, it, if it's good, if it's good, it'll it'll get watched eventually. Exactly. You just have to be patient. And if you know, if it's supposed to be an inspirational segment, and not everyone's a YouTuber, obviously, so you can really apply that to anything in life where. You, you just block out the distractions and if you have a goal you go for it full force without caring you know now i want to say without caring what the result is yeah but you have to be you have to be well basically if you have watched the rise again motivation video you have to be blind to the fear of failure i'm actually going to give you, you have to, a two for one here uh in quotes because okay. something else just came to my mind i forget who said this i think it was the dude who was, was the, i'm gonna get roasted for not knowing this guy's name i know his name uh, it's like steve something the guy who uh, was the main guy in Cheaper by the Dozen, Pink Panther. Steve Martin. Steve Martin. I think it was him. Not 100% certain. But it says, be so good that they can't ignore you. Oh, that's gospel. Right so, there. like, people who are just so good, like, people who are top, top tier, who are just that good that, like, exactly. you can't, no, like, people are going to know who they are. And people are not, no one's going to say, like, oh, their work isn't good. They might have some haters. They're just that good that people are coming to them. People want them for whatever they're doing. And so the goal is yeah. to get to that point. And so if we're not at that point yet, that means just keep on improving, keep getting better. And luckily we live in the day and age where we have so much information on YouTube and so many different platforms that is able to uh, learn constantly from it. And so, yeah, it's a crazy time of the Yeah, day. man. All right, guys. Well, that's the episode of Rise Again. Hopefully next week we'll have Tyler on. He keeps it a little more lighthearted, but I really think this was a good episode. Because see, now that Grant and I are living 14 hours apart once again, uh, this is kind of like a good time. We, we actually try and try and talk less during the week about topics yeah. and be like, oh, we'll save it for the podcast. It has happened plenty like, of times where Sharon is, where like I've started talking to Sharon for, to, with something and he's like, wait, save this for the podcast. This would be fantastic. Well, because me and Grant, were, Grant and I were getting passionate about the magic show and talking yeah. about the magic show and Instagram stuff. And I was like, you know, oh, we were talking about Eden's album and I was like, you know what? save what you're going to tell me for the podcast so I can get your actual reaction to Very it. Very true. Very true. And it'll be cool that one day we can go look back at this. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. Like, even if it's, yeah. even if this only gets, like, one view, it's cool to have. Yeah. Right, it's cool to have. All right, man. Well, peace out to everyone who made it to the very end. If you made it to the very end, uh, comment, I made it to the very end. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I'll reply to you, but I, I reply to everyone. Uh, so, yeah. Deuces, guys. All right. Thanks again so much for watching or you know, listening, whatever you're doing. iTunes, social media, Yo, description. Yo, big shout to the iTunes. Yeah. We, right, got we, gotta a, end this we got a few ratings on it. We got a, we got a, we got a, we got a, you know when they uh, hold the power button down on computers? Dun, 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 that's, dun, that's what I'm doing to the podcast dun, 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 right now. I'm holding it and we're off. Yeah, that was on. That was perfect. Let's get uh let's go back to FaceTime for a second.